G'day guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com and I'm reviewing some of my absolute favorite boots of late, the 350 Cruises from White. This is an exciting video, man. I've taken these boots up a volcano in Guatemala and a little less awesomely all over Minnesota and New York as well. I've interviewed guys from White's, like at their HQ for this video and we're gonna hear from them a bit later on. Can you hear us, Eric? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. But to sum everything up, I'm just gonna do it now. I found this to be a really nice midway point between low profile city boots and the kind of overbuilt bulky work boots you'll often find coming out of Pacific Northwest boot companies. It's easy to tell yourself that you wanna wear really monstrous boots that are the toughest you can find when you wind up with boots like that that have like a, you know, a two and a half inch heel or a super dramatic arch and they have like a huge structured toe box and weigh 50 pounds. That verbal may be exactly what you want, it may also be what you think you want, and when you get them, you realize you wanted something that has a lot of durability and craftsmanship, but maybe not the chunkiest work boot on earth. So, if that's you, consider this boot, the 350 Cruiser. This 350 Cruiser, uh, I'm not gonna pretend I'm reviewing it as a work boot, right? White doesn't sell it as one, and I don't wear it as one. I try to be pretty upfront on this channel uh, and not pretend that I'm like toiling in coal mines or chopping down trees in my boots. Like I just, where? You know, I just do things. Now, I guess it's true that White says these are a staple for outdoorsmen and sportsmen in the Pacific Northwest and around the world. They also say that this boot came about in the 1930s when Timber Cruises, which is a, a kind of forest surveyor, asked Otto White for a lighter and less cumbersome version of the true White's logger boot. I guess from a historical standpoint, the Cruiser, specifically the six inch boots, were created back in the early 1930s because Otto had all of the miners and the loggers coming to him and saying, hey, listen, we love the 10 inch, the 12 inch boots on the high arch 4811, but we would really like something that's a little less aggressive for when we're not on the clock or for the weekend. So really, as the legend goes, the 350 Cruiser and the six inch silhouette those patterns were created as a more weekend style boot for those loggers and miners and that's the original purpose of cutting down the upper and moving it to a more moderately arched last so while white says it's a good work boot by their own admission it is a cut down lighter easier to wear version of a really outdoorsy really worky kind of boot that's meant to be uh this is meant to be a better casual boot and you can find it in the lifestyle section of their website, alongside their Perry boot and MP Sherman boot, which we have reviewed before, both of those. So what have we got? A pretty meaty boot. Like the big way this six inch boot differs from the Sherman boot, which I got when it was just called the MP boot, is that the Sherman has more of a streamlined toe, like more of a dressy last, while the Cruiser has a wider, flatter toe. I do need to point out that the toe on the Cruiser is usually structured, but when White's creative director and Instagram boot celebrity Brent Whaley sent me these boots, which he calls his favorite pair ever, he sent them with an unstructured toe, so it's, it's softer. Yeah, most likely if Whaley was helping you out with your order, he may have specified unstructured toe. A lot of the folks that are buying that boot as more of a casual boot versus an actual work boot We'll go with the unstructured toe box because it just kind of right out of the box has a little bit more of a sleek, low profile look that the lifestyle market tends to lean toward. So you have the option of getting an unstructured toe, nice and squishy one here, where you can like wiggle your toes around, or you can get a structured toe, which is like reinforced with a moldable plastic impregnated material called Celastic. But we also need to talk about the last here. If you're kind of new to boots, the last is the foot-shaped mold that boots and shoes are built around and it determines just about everything with regard to the fit. And this is made on White's 55 Arch Ease Last, while the Sherman is on the MP Last, which has a lower arch and like, again, a sort of a dressier, pointier toe. This is Eric Kinney, the CEO of White's, walking you through it. The last itself, you know, I mean, it was developed, you know, in the early 30s. Otto White had a way of developing last plus developing uppers and patterns and truly he is the one who put his attention into the arch and what makes a, a boot fit the right way and that's a lot of our lasts are built with a high arch and that was his doing back when he started in the early 
1915 or somewhere there. Him and his dad came over from uh, West Virginia to, to start White. So it's a high arch last. It's not quite as high as the 4811, uh, a little more toe room than the 4811. There's definitely only more room in there for your toes compared to some of our last, especially the 4811 last. There's a little more squared off, more room to the ball, a little more toe volume as well. So the 55 doesn't have as dramatic an arch as the most popular 4811 last. This is the second most popular last and it has medium arch support with a roomier toe box as well. The idea is that it's less tightly fitted, so it's more ideal for like weekend wear. And I guess since we're talking about the way it fits, we should quickly touch on sizing here. Uh, get your usual boot size. There you go, uh, half a size down from your true size and a whole size down from what your sneaker size probably is. So, so I'm an 11 in this boot, 11D. I'm also 11D in Red Wing and Wolverine and Grant Stone and, and, and just about all of them, right? Uh, this boot comes in D and double E widths. I've already said everything about the Ruby toe box and everything. It's worth emphasizing though that this lower arch has helped this to not have an especially tough break in. I don't want to be too definitive on that because like break-in is often just like luck of the draw, but I didn't have much of a break-in with these at all, even with all the leather and the construction and everything. The boot is made with, actually, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll get Eric saying it to you. Here you go, he's, he's going to tell you. So you have a, a 10 iron, 10 to 11 iron leather insole. And on top of that, you're going to have a 10 to 11 iron leather midsole, so a single midsole, and then 11 to 12 iron leather shank. So in that boot, there's just one leather midsole, and then the rubber outsole, uh, which is usually a vibrant product. You can order that boot with a triple sole, which is just a double midsole, basically. Iron, by the way, uh, is an old way of measuring the thickness of leather, and each iron is a little larger than an ounce. Uh, I know this is all very non-metric, so to clarify, 10 to 11 iron is four to 4.4 millimeters thick. Boot uppers are typically two to 2.2 millimeters thick, so both the insole and the midsole are twice as thick as a good boot upper. It is a very solid, sturdy feeling walking around in this boot. If you're used to cheaper boots, then these will feel like cinder blocks. But the break-in wasn't nightmarish uh, for me personally. That can change again. I saw a guy in Reddit saying actually that, uh, quote, it's like my boots that give me a gentle but firm massage, like a handshake, but for your feet, which, which I like. Like the boots make themselves known when you're wearing them more than most other footwear, but it's not uncomfortable or too much or too heavy, like, like a lot of uh, Pacific Northwest boots are. The fact that the heel isn't two and a half inches tall like my next is part of that. Like you, you don't feel very lifted off the ground or like the boots are walking you, you know? This leather is kind of interesting. It's British tan Chrome XL. This is a, this is a pretty exciting leather. I have approximately 1 billion brown Chrome XL boots, but this is lighter than the darker, more reddish brown you get with brown Chrome XL. I really like this slightly brighter leather as a way to add an extremely mild amount of diversity in the sea of browns in my closet. But uh, if you don't like it, this boot uh, can be bought in like 10 other leathers right now. Everything from like, there are five Chrome XLs, including a burgundy. There are three wax fleshes, uh, including the famous cinnamon waxed flesh that I got my MPs on, uh, and two kinds of rough out, unwaxed rough out. While I'm on the leather, I'll mention that it turns out that volcanic rocks are extra sharp. And after wearing these up the Pacaya volcano in Guatemala, uh, that was on my trip there last year to make my own boots, which you must check out up there somewhere. Those rocks scratched the Chrome XL in what I'm pretty sure is a permanent way. If I'd gone with rough out, that wouldn't have been an issue. So take this as a reminder that smooth leathers can scratch. Uh, rough out does, but you know, maybe it's less pretty than some people. Price wise, these are 670 bucks. They are made in America with American leathers by hand as well. And I haven't really talked about how the upper is attached here to this sole. So this is hand sewn stitch down. And Eric has some interesting stuff to say about why he went with that form of construction for these boots. It's just more rugged. It's gonna last longer. You're actually hand sewing the vamp into the insole and through the middle of the insole through the outside of the vamp, which is gonna be more secure through any construction. A true stitch down boot is a good boot, but in the end, if you pit the two against each other on what's, which one's gonna last longer, you know, the stitch down or the well, hand welt's gonna last longer. There are some downsides to that. Uh, well, one downside I'm gonna mention a bit later on. When hand sewing a boot, they last welt and bottom it by hand. I've done all that myself. Let me tell you, it takes a lot more skill and time than regular Goodyear welts. And that's why these boots are one of the reasons why these boots aren't especially cheap. They are still cheaper than Vibergs. And if you know your way around American boots, you'll know that this is, uh, White's boots is a standard price for what you're getting here. You know what I mean? Uh, that said, White's are known to go on sale for like 20 to 25% off a few times a year, usually through their website and Baker's Shoes. 
Uh, so if you keep an eye on there, like in like the final few section at Baker's Shoes, I swear like returns and stuff uh, wind up. So if you're not particularly picky about leather or model, if you go there every week or two, you might find something there for like one or 200 bucks less than usual. But yeah, 670 bucks, that's, that's people accept that price quite happily. So let's talk about some pros and cons here. Uh, the pros are they're freaking gorgeous boots. Uh, the last forever and I made with premium materials, a ton of leather, the construction is superb and there's a lot of labor and skill and time that goes into this particular type of construction. Hand sewn stitch down is nothing to sneeze at. It's a big deal and will result in tremendous durability and water resistance. Stitch down is a tiny bit harder to resole, uh, but it shouldn't be hard to find a cobbler who will do it. And I also really want to emphasize here that if you want a Pacific Northwest style boot, but you are justifiably wary of the giant heels and uber high arches and the unwieldiness they sometimes come with for casual boot wearers, this is a really good way to get a Pacific Northwest boot that is distinctly Pacific Northwest and not as low profile and low arch as like the, the Sherman boot, my MP boot. Like it's a great way to kind of have your cake and eat it too. Pacific Northwest style, but like without the overbuilt touches that puts up some city folk, right? The downsides are, yeah, I mean, it's expensive. There are cheaper boots out there. It also takes months and months to make. Right now on their side, it says it takes 20 to 24 weeks. That is five to six months. And that is the suckiest thing about Wipes and Nix and Wesco and Russell and these smaller ultra American handmade boot type companies. It's a long wait. The boots will last you more than 10 years, maybe forever. And in the scheme of things, uh, yeah, that's not that long a wait, but you, you do have to wait usually anyway. I also want to talk a little more about the construction process uh, because I've been around a couple of cobblers lately who have resold white boots. Uh, one I did a whole video with at Beto's Leatherworks up there. He resold the white boots with me. Uh, I helped a bit. And uh, the other one was Trenton and Heath. They're also big cobbling YouTubers. And they said the construction is very weird on whites. Like not bad, but very unusual. Uh, so if you look real close, there are two layers under the toe, a fine layer and the midsole layer. The layer that is the second layer down is the upper. The piece on top that looks like it's the upper is actually a second piece of leather that's almost like stitched on like a good deal welt, but it's hand welted through. I'm showing a similar boot uh, from whites on Trenton and Heath's channel right now. They're the ones who pointed this out to me. That again, they're cobblers with their own excellent channel. What you can see is that they take a very thin strip of leather and they stitch it through the upper and then they flare it out. So it's actually two pieces and then the sole is stitched on through there. The main thing I'm trying to point out here is that this thin layer is welted on top and it's curled over. So when you get the stitch, the stitch is basically squeezing it really hard and you get this kind of puffy look. That, that's all I'm trying to show you here is that this stitching on white boots, and I've seen it on a few of them, the leather often looks like a bit puffy here around the toe and some guys hate it. The guy who had sent his boots to Trenton and Heath just wanted it reconstructed just so that there wasn't that puffiness there. Like he just hated it so much. If you don't care and you probably don't then don't worry about it. Um, but I just want to mention for some guys that is a deal breaker. And I guess if you're spending this much money on boots, uh, it's understandable you want everything to be perfect, right? Otherwise, if you can handle the price and you understand that this isn't a dress boot, like it's, it's pretty casual, it's not something to wear with a blazer. If you wear it right, it is a tremendous boot. You may not love the wider toe box. If that's you, just get like an MP Sherman boot or something. Uh, I sometimes wish they had speed hooks up here so it was faster to get on. But if that bugs you, you know, you can just ask them to put speed hooks there. You know what I mean? Like when, when you're paying this much for a boot, you can usually, and not always with every brand, but usually get what you want and you can get the kind of eyelets, toe box, leather and whatever that you want. The price and the wait time are what suck here. And I guess the fact that it's not the world's most versatile boot, but it is a very good Pacific Northwest boot and a very good casual boot. And when I want a heavier, more, like more assertive type boot, I much prefer this over my high arch, high heel Pacific Northwest boots. Like this, this is just a very superb boot. And uh, there are a lot of models out there that try to fuse work and casual. And uh, this, this might be the best one that I've seen, the best attempt at that that I've seen. So big fan, uh, link below in the description if you wanna get them. Thanks to the white stuff for uh, chatting with me on a Zoom call while I was in a cafe in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And yeah, man, that's my video about these boots. So uh, yeah, let me know if you'd like these, subscribe below as well if you wanna see more videos about boots and apparel that's built to last. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.